Yay! One thing about South Africans, jealousy runs through their veins. Uze upumengeziku zoboya. They have absolutely no shame about it and they even expose themselves to the whole world. Buntle Mudisele Moloi took to her social media to reveal that she was invited to and attended the Rock Nation brunch, which means she's a big deal that gets to rub shoulders with powerhouses like Beyonce, Jay-Z, Kelly Rowland, and a number of other international superstars. South Africans weren't having that. They even went as far as questioning whether she even deserved to be in that space. From comments like, You had to dance trying to get noticed by Beyonce while your broke husband Pretty Ugly was babysitting at home, which basically means so anyone can just rock up to this event. Surely you danced till sweat came dripping down your butt crack just so you could get noticed by Beyonce. To comments like, which celebrity did you bust it wide open for to get there? Groupie O'Clock, resqueezing in of the year and batong. How did you, of all people, get an invite? Ooh-wee! Cute Skorokoro commented. The negative comments? Born haters the whole lot of you. And I absolutely agree with her. Black people all over the world have a genetic defect called jealousy. Obviously not every black person. The same way that men are perceived as trash and women are perceived as gold diggers in society based on the lot that has reflected those traits is the same way I mean this. Our oppressors discovered that jealousy is predominant in our community and used this information to crush us. What made crushing us even easier for them was how they were able to use our kinfolk to bring us down because whenever someone in the black community does well, those who are struggling do anything and everything in their power to bring them down to their level. Or worse, they take them out completely. Additionally, South Africans suffer from generational trauma, which they inherited from their ancestors and parents who experienced and witnessed apartheid and were programmed to think less of themselves. Thus, when someone who looks like them and comes from their country makes extraordinary moves, 
They struggle to fathom how that's even possible. So they attribute it to external and often demeaning factors. Also, their genetic defect kicks in and they begin to compare themselves to the movers and shakers. They compete with them. And when they fail, because they always do fail, that's what happens when unen is your emtaka and you're ruled and governed by jealousy. They begin to question what it is about the movers and shakers that enables them to move and shake. Their inferiority complex has blinded them to the fact that it all begins within. When you have a pure heart and put in the work, you're bound to succeed. Buntle Modisele Molloy works her butt off, fending for herself, her child, and her stay-at-home husband with his struggling career. And it's not like he doesn't try, because he attempted to fight Casper Nyovest for some grands so he could carry out his duties as a provider. But he failed dismally because Casper beat his ass two seconds into the match. But Oksalayo Uyazama, unlike many who bash while sleeping on the floor, em Jondolo Nenyao Engolile. So while her husband tries, Buntle books gigs, movies, and breaks choreography world records. Of course she deserves to kiki with goal getters. And in so doing, she also flies the South African flag high. But no, omonase nabatagati base south ah are angered by load shedding. Water shortages, crime, potholes, low employment opportunities, high poverty rates, and a dead beat president. Bangamela Ogukipa is bongo on fellow South Africans who can afford to travel the world and live their best lives abroad because they simply wish they could be in their shoes. Tubunte. Hala! Maga Africa. Hope to see you dancing with Beyonce and fulfilling all your dreams. Mdase. Remember, misery loves company. Don't succumb to it and don't give these sore losers the satisfaction. You deserve this and more. Mwah! Another queen that deserves all the congratulations in the world is Riri Babe. Rihanna gave a mid-performance at the Super Bowl and simultaneously revealed that she and her bum boyfriend are expecting their second child. Congratulations to her for all that she's achieved thus far. She's a household name. Her music catalog is out of this world. All her businesses are booming and she's a certified MILF. That doesn't erase the fact that many people feel that she should bow out and retire with her dignity still intact because she now sucks balls. The Lift Me Up single, which was released after the longest musical hiatus of all time, is jaw-droppingly underwhelming. Many even thought that it was a song Zahara composed while poop drunk. Her Super Bowl performance is also said to be lazy, weak, and unmemorable. I say that's what you get for comparing Rihanna to Beyonce. Beyonce has been outstanding since the very beginning of her career, and that has irritated many. Hence, Whenever a new girl would come in, they would put her against Beyonce with hopes that Beyonce would be replaced. Time and again, the king has proven that she is in her own legendary league and no one comes close. But because people were so desperate 
For Rihanna to be the new Beyonce, they placed her on a pedestal, overrated her and held unrealistically high expectations for her. No matter how much of a Riri stan you are, deep down you know for a fact that she isn't a brilliant singer, dancer or performer. So it's wild to expect her to deliver a mind-blowing performance, especially while pregnant. Beyonce, on the other hand, has performed while pregnant several times, and each performance left everybody, including her biggest haters, shook. Why? Because she's Beyonce. Rihanna is Rihanna. So she gave a typical Rihanna performance. She never said she strived to be on Beyonce's level. She just said that she was inspired by her. Until people come to terms with that fact, they will continuously be disappointed. Another fact that people are struggling to come to terms with is that Rihanna has settled for bummy ASAP Rocky. We've seen this happen a lot with women in their 30s, especially if they want children of their own. Nicki Minaj settled for a convict, married him, had a son with him, and they're now rumored to be expecting their second child together. This is a man who isn't allowed to be in the same vicinity as minors, as he has been deemed a threat by the law. Yet Nikki chose him, perhaps because she felt like she was running out of time and that he's a better demon than the rest because they once dated when they were much younger. It seems Rihanna also panicked when she realized that her biological clock was ticking. So she decided to settle for familiarity, which comes in the form of a delinquent colorist who may be facing jail time in the near future. The dating pool is full of pee and has gorgeous, successful women settling for low-hanging fruit and becoming baby mamas. Men really need to do better so women can actually have a healthy variety to choose from. Others who need to do better are those who are calling Rihanna's baby boy ugly. I don't care how shady, petty, or black-hearted you are. Children are off limits. Some things are better left as kitchen table talk, especially when they have the power to destroy an innocent soul. Also, Riri is currently pregnant, and having to deal with such vile utterances during such a critical time in her life may pose health risks to her and her unborn child. If she isn't being called a talentless Wentworth colored lookalike, she's shamed for being a quote unquote dyke's baby mama with an ugly child that looks like Bonga the perambulator. You can't preach kindness, then carry out the devil's work. Seriously, do better.